All right, welcome to the May 7th Aries Cloud Agent Python maintainers meeting. A bunch of things to talk about from uh, the various uh, things that are happening um, around upgrade updates um, to features, getting ready for 1.0 and other PRs and issues. Reminder that we're recording, reminder that this is a Linux Foundation meeting so the antitrust policy is in effect and it's a hyperledger meeting so the code of conduct is in effect any um topics not already on the agenda we want to add to the to this all right um ian i've been seeing stuff but i haven't actually looked at the issue so could you give me an update yeah Thank the you. um the the um the pull request for the issue credential it looks like it's working um so i tested it this morning and it's working so i'm just going to do a quick review of the code and then tag jamie to take a look at it um and then the pull request um i'm going to double check on that one they haven't opened a pr yet into the hyperledger repo yeah. but they've got some work that they're doing on their repo so i'm just going to double check and see where they're at with that okay i know they were having they're having some difficulty figuring out uh when they get a diff or uh, proof request whether it was you know for indie or non-indie credentials and so i pointed them to the um uh aries firmware javascript or whatever that's yeah called. And but they so anyway, so they were they had some questions about the code, so I told them just to tag Timo. Okay. So um Martin Hour questions answered on that or not. Okay, Martin Hour did that coding. So he might be another one to tag. Yeah, Timo uh dropped an email Addy for somebody who he said wasn't on Discord. Oh so I, don't, I don't know if, if uh Sartak has been emailing him. Okay, hopefully. Okay. I'll, uh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's where they're at. Okay. Hopefully we'll be able to get that first pull request merged. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jamie, update here. I know you're very, very close. Um, yeah, so I was looking at the holder side of stuff that I kind of just missed looking at for the upgrade okay. and um one of the problems is really obvious is the the link secret uh has a slightly different format so that actually needs to needed to be part of the upgrade script and that fixed one of the problems but then there is there's this other problem where when um uh, you're getting the credential a new credential for some reason if you already had a credential an indie credential i don't think the handler is quite working right and it's in a different format and it only happens if you already have a credential so i like just the problem is with the the blinded secret it's the key for that object change yeah slightly how can it change there's no way that link secret should be changing just the key name it changes from master secret to oh okay. link secret right okay i thought you were saying the the data value and that was scaring me no so all i like patched it just changed the changed the uh key name and everything's working now but yeah. um i want to figure out why that's actually happening because it's not making a lot of sense so why it's it's basically going the wrong path if there's already a credential in the so anyway i still want to figure out why exactly that's happening but i think those that's not throwing any errors or anything and everything's working after those changes so i i still think this is close but um yeah i actually noticed 
a different problem. It's not related to the actual upgrade. It's with an, a non creds in general. Um, okay. If you have multiple credentials and you uh, revoke one, then the proof is returning false. And it, even though there's other credentials that are valid. And I just noticed this recently and it's not to do it. Yeah, it's, there's something going on with actual non creds hand. It might be like something to do with the handling or something S still. So okay. that's another problem that needs to be fixed. I, I don't know if I'm going to do it with the upgrade. Yeah. It's already huge or not. Or change it. Yeah. Or change it to a new one. So, I mean, that shouldn't, a non credit just does what you tell it. So you should, you, what should be happening is you query the wallet with the presentation request and it it gives you um, a set of credentials that satisfy it. So if you have multiple credentials that satisfy it, you would get multiple with one as the first one. And that first one, and, and so the idea would be you could use the first one, but you could also have a user interface that says, hey, you, you could satisfy this with multiple, which one do you want to do? And the tricky part is the, the algorithm for, for automatically picking what's the first one, what's the default one you're going to use, should take into, it should be the most recent non-revoked credential that in the list. Yeah. So it sounds like it's... something in that area, but a non-creds itself, by the time a non-creds gets it, you should have picked one and and passed it in and, and it should have no idea about any other one that is revoked. So was, unless you're actually passing the revoked one, which of course it would fail, um, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be an issue. So interesting. Yeah, I just noticed that. So um, that will definitely need to be fixed, but hopefully yeah. it's not too big of a deal. Okay. Yeah, use case there is huge, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, on logging, we heard we had yet another um, request on logging, and it's causing us to, or, or uh, feedback on logging that somebody deployed the new version and had a problem, and basically was associated with setting uh the startup parameter for logging once they removed that it was fine but it basically is raising questions with us about the logic that was put in with the logging and so we're rethinking i, I think the plan is for akif to look at it again with the idea that he doesn't have to keep it the implementation and look at doing something different because it seems like it's a mess right now there's different handling for whether it's in multi-tenant or single tenant. Um and uh and, and and various other things to do with you know sort of generic login logging configuration. And given the change we were trying to accomplish, which is just to add some sort of um wallet identifier to a logging message so that in future um uh the, the logs could be split based on that um that identifier it shouldn't be this hard <laughs> is the bottom line so we're making we're we're thinking it's way it's more complex than it needs to be and needs to be refactored so that's where we are with that i don't know if anyone um has any comments on that but yeah it's not where we want to be with that um but unfortunately Keith is ill um today so can't make it daniel did you have something you want to add i uh, not on the logging topic i missed my opportunity okay. to jump in after the the upgrading wallet types yeah, um yeah. i just had a quick question that i wanted to raise um i've had a number of people asking about the wallet upgrade script over the past little while people have been having issues with this that or the other thing and I, i've spent a little bit of time 
in that code thinking about it um and uh on the subject of upgrading from the existing anon credits implementation to the new anon credits implementation uh the way the wallet upgrade script is set up right now is we're going from the original anon creds in the ND SDK wallet to original anon creds in the ASCAR wallet um and I wanted to ask if anybody had any thoughts on whether we wanted to provide an upgrade path from Indy to the new Anon creds uh, setup, uh, whether that's something we should worry about at all, or if, if we can get it to from Indy to Ascar, then we could go through the upgrade endpoint that uh, Jamie's been working on. So I, I'm not sure that it's strictly necessary that we put it into the wallet upgrade step. Um, and there might be things going on there that would be a little too complicated for us to reproduce in that context, but I yeah. think for the for the Indy to Ascar upgrade, they should use the existing script. So if they're in India and they want to go to a non creds they need to go through the two separate. They need to upgrade to Ascar and then they need to upgrade from Ascar to a non -creds. Okay. That's, that's yeah. Good. Just to keep things simple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. So the so to answer why that is, we talked about this a while ago. Um, but the the reason is because the wallet upgrade from Ascar to Ascar that that Jamie's done can basically be done is is done by the controller and on the fly. The the upgrade from Indy to Ascar must be done offline and right. um, taking the whole. So the thing we're trying to accomplish with what Jamie's done is the um, uh, doing it by under the control of the tenant versus um, the entire Akapai instance, whereas the Indy to Ascar requires the entire instance be upgraded. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. That that makes sense. Um, uh, it there might be somewhere in the wallet upgrade script where maybe I should like write up a quick note about that um or maybe that belongs somewhere in in the Akapai docs but that makes sense to me so yeah thanks yeah okay um daniel this one um so yeah, go ahead. Right. Um, so uh, a CVE for AIO HTTP came out over the weekend. Um, something about multi-part requests, if crafted in a particular way, can cause the uh, AIO the AIO HTTP server to enter an infinite loop, uh, which is fun. Uh, so it's a really low That's effort. Cool. Um, really low effort denial of service. Um, so as it turns out, we've already gotten the patched version of AIO HTTP into the 0.12.1 release of Akapai, so we're good on that front. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other places within the Hyperledger Aries ecosystem that we need to make the same upgrade. Um, there's like a dozen different warnings for like the Aries Akapai plugins repo, for instance. Um, but uh, yeah, so the question is, um, given that this is a pretty severe issue, really easy like um, exploit, I guess, should we go back and patch like zero eleven, or or if there, are, or do we go even further than that? If there's still people that are on older versions, do we bother going back and and providing patch releases, or do we just tell everybody to upgrade to zero twelve one? Comments? Maybe a, a slightly more pointed question. Um, uh, out of your deployments on the VCF side, how up to date are you guys right now? Or, or do you have any anything that's lingering on older versions of Akpai or or? Like... We, do, we do have something that is not on the latest, but we're planning, if it, if it is like a critical application and not just a demo, we're planning on updating it as soon as possible. 
Yeah. So I guess what I was going to ask is like, is there anything that would prevent us, like, prevent an adopter of, of or say 011 to update to a newer version uh, at all? So that we have to make like patch patches for older versions versus promote updating to the newer version. It's just going to be like a, if you don't have like a long-term support type of strategy thing, it's going to be very hard to to balance how many how many versions we we go back, what type of patches we put in, and whatnot, right? Yeah. The, the, the list mean, of a... breaking changes from like the zero eleven to zero twelve release isn't particularly fresh in my mind, but I don't remember there being anything like, you know, somebody that's coming in new that's just just picked up zero eleven. I don't think there would be anything that would prevent them from picking up zero twelve. Not much. The breaking changes were minimal. Yeah. Um, that said, I mean, it's pretty trivial to do a release. Yeah. It would be an hour or so, hour and a half of work. So it wouldn't be a lot of work to do an 11, a 10 and 11. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking more about like, you know, the effort of, of backporting some of these changes. It might be completely straightforward. And, and you know, the only it, thing... The only thing we would be doing was 012, the AIO HTTP, and verifying that it worked. That's all we would do. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it would only be an hour. If it was any, it, it, we're not going to backport anything else. It's strictly to deal with this CVE. I, I think. Let's do 11 and just to see, and I can take it on, I'll do it. Um, okay. But just to see the effort. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye out for the PR and, and approve it, but I'll go ahead and do the release. Cool. Sounds good to me. Yeah, let's give it a try. And and we go through the effort and I'll time, you know, I'll figure out how much time it takes to do such a thing. And again, if 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 AIO HTTP doesn't work, um, like the the tests fail, other than we making sure it's not just an intermittent failure, um, then I'd be tempted to not. But basically, I'm all I'm doing is updating to the same version as zero twelve one, correct? Yeah, and that version okay. is three dot nine dot four. Um, just for, nine dot four. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. And that's that's on the CVE advisory as well, of, of yeah. course. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, let's look at PRs just to see where we are. Um, we've talked this one. Um, anyone know about these two? I haven't looked at the API spec one. Uh, that seems like it would be pretty, pretty straightforward upgrade. Uh, I don't imagine there's been any, any major changes there, but I haven't looked. Um, the PIA did one. I, I have been working with Maritz on that. Um, yeah. uh, it's currently marked as draft because the, he's anticipating a new release of the PIDID oh, library okay. Um, okay. that that upgrades. Um, yeah, the version of Pydantic being used by Pydid. Um, so, uh, yeah, that we've got his changes merged in to the Pydid library and planning on doing a release soon, just making sure that there's nothing else that should go into a Pydid release before making that. Okay. Um, and I think he's gone through the process of testing already within Akapai as well, and it worked just fine. So, yeah, um, yeah pretty low effort, low key, I think, change. Okay. So. Uh, this one's still in draft, um, the one, the SDK one. Yeah, um, that one I can probably take off draft. It just needs a rebase, I think. Um, I can't do an automatic rebase because of poetry lock conflicts, so I'll have to go in and regenerate. Um, okay. But it it should be really straightforward to get okay. that ready to go. All right. Uh, Emiliano, you've still got this one, and you hope to pass it to somebody? That, or you still got it? Uh, if, if today doesn't build up like with meetings again, I should have some time to look into it. Otherwise, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to maybe 
Jamie or, or Keith and see if they can help me. Okay. It's not enough time. And this one was assigned to Patrick, and I don't know where he is on that one, so I'll I'll uh, connect out to him. Okay. So I think that's everything. This is, of course, the, Ian's one that we talked about is ready to merge, but there'll be a new one coming in. Um, anyone know about this one? Is this one we just merge and go for it? I think this library is primarily used by the in-memory wallet type. Um, so yeah, it's probably pretty low risk to to do the minor version update on it. So yeah, tests are passing, so it's probably good to go. Consider it done. See, Jamie, all you got to do is that 65 times in the plugins repo and we're all good. I was doing that for a while and then <laughs> gave up. <laughs> yep, exactly. Oh. Um, I did not get a chance to go through these, so um, we're still looking through. Um, I still want to have a path through this. I might be able to do it today. We'll see. Um, so I don't have any updates on this. And I didn't even get a chance to go through some of the ones that I really should have. Um, um, how's this going, Jamie? I know you took a look at this and then you had some um, maintainer problems. Yeah, I'll get back to it again. I have yeah. something so it will actually generate a report and then make a comment on the PRs. Okay. All right. Um, that reminds me, can we, I, I'm going to propose that Jamie become a maintainer. Um, given the depth and complexity of the issues he's been working with, I think that would be a helpful thing. So um, that PR will go in as well. Barring, you know, someone screaming and yelling and complaining. Didn't even hear an objection from Jamie. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. I think that's everything for now. Any other topics people want to raise and talk about? So just to, to uh, clarify, I guess. Um, so once we get the PRs that are currently in, uh, is that everything that we expect for a 1.0 release or was there I anything else? I think so. Um, I did want to, that's why I did want to go through the issues. Um, okay. If there's anything people see that they want to tag as 1.0, um, please do so. There is a label. Um, so, but that was my plan was to go through this, um, to go through at least the last hundred and and see if there's anything we want to put in there, close as many as I can and and come up with that. Yeah. Cool. I'll create a ticket for this one I mentioned. Uh and tag one on it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then I got to create a ticket for the AIO HTTP patch release. For now, I'll only do 11 and see how long it takes. And then we can decide on, uh, on Discord or whatever on whether to do another. Anything else? Sounds good. Thanks all. Bye. Have a good day. Thanks. Yeah, see I'll you. see ya. Bye.